Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Praise the Lord. My name is Apostle Jerry. I'm saved by grace through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And this is the gift of God. And I'm celebrating Jesus for such a moment to bring you to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among the saints. It's only in the word of God whereby lives are equipped. It's only in the, uh, in the word of God whereby we are transformed by the word of God. And I'm so grateful to bring to you the word of God. This is the Beholding Christ Show. I believe Believe your life will never be the same again so relax and take some moment and listen to the word of God praise the Lord today I want us to look on something and I know it will really bless your heart not only today tomorrow or the other day but it will it will bless your life forever I want to talk something about the bread of life and I want to begin by telling you that Jesus is the bread of life I want us to look what is the bread of life why do we say in the Bible that this is the bread of life, that God is the bread of life? And I want us to go directly to the word of God in the book of Exodus chapter number 16 and from verse number 8. Exodus chapter number 16 and from verse number 8. And the Bible says, Also Moses said, This shall be seen when the Lord give you meat to eat in the evening and in the morning, bread to the full, for the Lord hears your complaints which you make against him. And what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. I'll go again, verse number 12, 16 and from verse number 12. I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Now, this is the scenario that happened in the old days. These were the children of Israel. Remember, this was the journey that these people were taking from from the other side and the lord had promised them a good land you know and the bible says that um these people are really complaining were really complaining in fact after every moment they used to complain to moses but not to god they used to complain to moses and when they lacked water they really asked moses why have you brought us here to die of thirst when they lack food they were like moses why did you brought us here to die of hunger and these people used to mama all the time they used to mama and the bible says god used to provide to them why because god is so faithful god is so good and and from the beginning of time, you realize that our God is a good, good God. And that is his nature. In fact, that's why we say that God is good and that is his nature. And God used to walk with them. God used to provide to them. But they never saw the provision that God was giving to them. They saw how they lacked. They were so fast to complain. They were so fast uh, to mama to Moses. And they were like, Moses, have you brought, here to, uh, brought us here to die? Have you brought us here to... And to, to, uh, to lack things. But look at this. God was faithful. And the Bible says now he's telling Moses that from morning I will be providing manna for the children of Israel. And the Bible says that manna could come from heaven and it will drop in the morning. You know, I was asking myself, why manna and why in the morning? Why early in the morning? Why not evening? Why not uh, maybe once a week or twice a week? And I came to realize the reason as to why they, he wanted to provide to them every morning it's because he wanted them to eat fresh manna. Praise the Lord. And this is the good thing about God. He wants us to receive fresh manna every day. And you know, this was a picture of the bread of life, which was Jesus Christ. But in the Old Testament, it was through, uh, it was through visions. It was uh, through, the, uh, through the shadows of the good things to come. Praise the Lord. And so this manna we are talking about, this was the word of God. But in those old times, they couldn't understand it. So God used to provide to them things uh, to show them the good God. He gave them food to show them that he was there for them. He really cared for them because that is his nature. And you know, once your nature is good, you cannot be bad. Why? Because your nature will always represent you, whether in bad condition or in good condition. And the Bible says that um, these people complained and Moses Ask God, give us food, give us water, give us everything that we need, and God provided. And this manna used to come every morning, every morning. Why? Because God wanted them to enjoy 
are new. He wanted them to enjoy fresh things. He wanted them to explore and to, and, and to get good things because God is a good thing. In fact, the Bible says that every perfect and good, every good and perfect gift comes from God. And why in the morning again? In the morning because God wanted them to see the good. God wanted them to see the good part of him. He wanted them to live happily. He wanted them not to lack something good and the bible says he used to provide to them if early in the morning and i was looking at this and i was like why early in the morning because god wants us to enjoy his goodness god wants us to enjoy his provision god wants us to enjoy his peace in fact the bible says that uh, that cry may be for, for night but joy comes in the morning you know when he says joy comes in the morning it's not when you wake up in the morning but when you wake up to the reality of the truth of the gospel of christ wow that's good news that every morning you can wake up and get uh, fresh uh, fresh manner you can wake up and get fresh uh revelations you can wake up and get you know fresh good and good things from god praise the name of the lord amen amen and the bible says uh from verse number 15 so when the children of israel saw it they said to one another what is it for they did not know what it was and moses said to them this is the bread of the lord that the lord has given to you to eat you know these people were like so how is this provision going to happen what is this but Moses was there to explain to them that this is the fresh manna that comes from the uh, from God. You know, Moses was a spokesman, God's spokesman, and the Bible says Moses was there to explain to them what about this manna. He was there to show them that this is not just manna to receive, this is not just manna to eat, but this is something that comes from God. What what a good news to understand that this thing comes from God. You know, when you understand things comes from God, then you will know that how good God is. For example, if my parent will come today and give me something and uh, and maybe someone else come and gives me something th th that will be different things that will be uh, I will approach it differently why because I will know that uh, if it is from the outsider maybe yes he will provide but not as better as my parent why because I know my parent knows me better and you know these people now Moses wanted wanted them to understand that it was from God Praise the name of the Lord. And I thank God for Jesus because now when Jesus came to this world, he came to explain to us now about the bread of life. He came to explain to us about now what happened in the Old Testament and now to the New Testament. And how was this uh, possible? It was possible because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. When Jesus was in this world, you know, there were, there, there, there were things that Jesus was going through. Uh, there were scenarios that Jesus was going through and he wanted to show us now that this is the bread of life and this is now how it works and this is how now you can receive it praise the lord and um when you look in the book of um in the book of psalms psalm 78 from verse number 24 to 25 psalms 24 and from verse number uh, psalms 78 and from verse number 24 to 25 the bible says i'm reading from the new king james version the bible says and had rained down manna on them to eat and give them the bread of heaven. Men ate angels. Men ate angels food. He sent them food to the full. You know, now this is David, and if David is continuing to explain to us, now what about the, the fresh manna? You know, there is one good about the word of God. The word of God, the more you read the word of God, the more you understand. For example, what Moses taught the Israelites is not what uh, David taught. What taught, uh, David taught is not what Isaiah taught. What Isaiah taught was not what Jeremiah taught. And what uh, taught, uh, Jeremiah taught was not what John the Baptist taught. Why? Because revelation continues expanding as time goes. Praise the name of the Lord. And now David, uh, David is telling us that even the food that they were eating, it was, it was food from angels and it was from heaven. So he wanted them to understand that, you know, you didn't just wake up in the morning and uh, enjoy this. It was not just for enjoyment, but it was there as a revelation that you only receive things from God. Wow, I love this. You only receive good things from God. And God wanted to show these people that I have come that you may have life. I have come to bring you what you really needed what you really needed is what I've come to give you and you know these preachers came and explained to them that this was now food for angels and it was given to you why 
so that you can never be in hunger, so that you can never thirst, so that you can never lack anything. In fact, the Bible says in the book of John, uh, in the book of Psalms 23 and from verse number 1 to number 6, that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, when you have a shepherd, all your wants are taken care of by him. And God wanted the Israelites to understand that, that when you have me, you have everything. But these people never understood that because they never they never related with God. They, re, they related with Moses. But God wanted to relate with them directly. But they couldn't see God. They could see Moses. Okay, so God was like, okay, I will use Moses to give you this truth. And so David is saying to us that this was fresh manna and it was from God. And it was given by the angels. But I love it now in the new covenant because now when you go to the new covenant, you realize what the new, what it meant by the, uh, the by the bread, what it meant by the manna. Was it only about manna? Was it all about food? Was it all about uh, waking up in the morning and getting uh, food? Was it all about uh, being provided with water? And we will see it in a sh uh, in a short time in the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, chapter number four, and from verse number three, this is an interesting uh, scenario that is happening. And in Matthew, chapter number four. And from verse number three, the Bible says, Now then, the tempter came to him, the tempter, that is the devil. He said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones become bread. And verse number four, I'm reading Matthew 4 from verse three to number four. Verse four, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You know, now this was a scenario where Jesus went to pray. The Bible says that Jesus went to the wilderness to pray. And I want to correct some errors. Jesus never went, uh, Jesus was never, uh, never went to the wilderness to be tempted. That was not his main mission. Jesus never went to be tempted. He went to pray. And at the midst of praying, the tempter came. I love it in King James, King James uh, New King James Version. It says, and the tempter came. Praise the Lord. And the tempter, the Bible says, and the devil tells Jesus, you know, uh, I know you are hungry. I know you are hungry. And I want you to change these stones to bread. You know, that was not a big thing to Jesus. Jesus could change uh, the stones to bread and he could eat and he could, get, he could be satisfied. But look at this. Jesus is explaining something here. That man shall not live by bread alone. You know, the Israelites lived by bread. Though it was a, uh, though it was a revelation that should come. It was concealed. But now Jesus is coming to reveal the truth about the old covenant. And the Bible says, and Jesus said to the devil, man shall not live by bread alone. Man can never live by bread alone. Yes, I can change these stones to be bread. But look at this. Apart from this, there is something important. There is something great that you should know is that you can never live by this. Yes, if I change these stones to be bread, I will eat today. Tomorrow, I will need the same bread. The other day, I will need this bread. But look at this. I have something great that once you take it, you will never go hungry again. You will never go thirsty again. And the Jesus looked at the devil and said, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live with bread alone. You know, there is something that God wants us to know here. He doesn't want you to relate with him uh, with the bread. He doesn't want you to relate with him with what you need every day. You know, the God of Mahitaji. He doesn't want you to, uh, to relate with him according to the, your own issues. It's not about your own issues. It's about his own life giving to you. I know you will eat of this bread. I know you will need a drink of this, uh, this water. I know you will need this and you'll need it every day. But there is something that I'm giving to you. You won't need it every day. You just need it once. And Jesus said, you shall not live by bread alone, but you shall live by the, the, by the word that proceeds from the word of God. In the book of uh, Joshua 1 and from verse number 8, the Bible says, and God told Joshua, and this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth and you shall speak it day and night let me tell you something there is something important than the food we eat there is something important than the lifestyle we live there is something important than how we do things and this is the bread of life and jesus has come now to reveal to us what it means by the bread of life and jesus explained to the devil that i don't need this i need this and look at this when jesus 
explained the new covenant. He is said that you shall not live by bread alone. You shall live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And look at this. Jesus was the best example. Jesus spoke things and things happened. For example, when Jesus, when the when the, Jesus was preaching, there were 5,000 people who came to the, to the meeting. And look at this. The Bible says that those were 5,000 men. Now, you have not counted children. <laughs> and you have not counted children, uh, the women. So you can imagine about 20,000 people. And Jesus, after preaching the gospel, the Bible says, and Jesus said, where do we get food? to give to these people. And you know, the disciples were like, you know, uh, the treasury team doesn't have the much money. We don't have even food. Where do we even buy this food? Tell people to go. But the Bible says, when you look closely, the Bible says, and Jesus knew what to do. Look at this. Jesus knew what to do. Even in the old covenant, God knew what the Israelite would need. Wow, this is a good, this, this is good that God knows everything that we need. And you know, when he knows everything that we need, we don't need even to go to him to ask for anything, but because he knows. In fact, the Bible says, even before you pray, I already know what you need. And God gives you the best. That is the best thing about God. God does not just give you what you need. God gives you the best. He knows that if you eat this for, for food today, if you, I give you this today, you will need it tomorrow. If I give you this today, you will need it tomorrow. And the Bible says, and Jesus said, tell them to sit down. Why? Because I have provision. I have what it takes. And look at this. When people eight. The Bible says there were 12 baskets and the 12 baskets that remained, you know, this was God was more than enough. But look at this. This was bread. Now, the following day, Jesus came again to the same, same meeting and the people came in multitude. In fact, I believe they came even more than the 5,000 people. Now you can just imagine. They came more than the 5,000 people. And the Bible says, and Jesus asked them, have you come to me because of the bread you ate yesterday or because of the life that I give, I'm giving to you? And the Bible says, and all the people disappeared. Why? Because they came for the bread they ate yesterday. And Jesus looked at the disciples and told the disciples, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Why are you not following your other, uh, the, the other people? And Peter looked at Jesus and said, where do we go? Where do we go? And Jesus noticed, wow they have gotten. It's not about the bread I gave yesterday. It's about the life that I'm giving to them. And Jesus said, and, and Jesus knew, now these are the people that I need even in my ministry. People who won't come to me because of the things they need. People that would come to, the, to me because they need the, the Mahitajis to be settled. And let me tell you something. The Bible, uh, you know, uh, in, in this world, people have mistaken God and people think that God is a means to an end. And I want to tell you, God is not a means to an end. God is the end. When you have him, you have the end. You have everything that you need. You know, one day Peter was um, was going to, the, to, to prayer at 3 p.m. And the Bible says at this time when Peter went, you know, Peter had gotten this, that it is not about the Mahitajis being Shugulikiwa, but it's about the life-giving spirit. And the Bible says when Peter went, he found a lame person there and this man asked them for money. And Peter said, gold and silver we don't have. He didn't mean that we don't have gold. He didn't mean that we don't have silver. Because once you are in Christ, all these things, they are added. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things, these things are added. So it doesn't mean that Peter never had that which this man asked. But Peter knew one thing. If I give you money, tomorrow I will find you here. If I give you resources, tomorrow I will find you here. If I give you richness, tomorrow I will find you here. Look at this. I have something better. I have something better. Better than what you think you need. And the Bible says, in the name of Jesus, wake up and walk. Look at this. And this man followed Peter to pray. He followed Peter to the place of prayer. I believe there are people who are like, but this is the man that would to me watch up in jail. What happened? And this man was like, you know, I have been there looking for money. I've been there looking for resources. But there is something that I've received this time around. And this has changed my life forever. And what has changed my life forever? The word of God. I have been changed by believing in Christ Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Jesus told them to to sit and now hear the word of God. You know, 
This is to tell us that Jesus has come with, a, with, the, with the message, the true message, that it is not about what men need, but what God has provided. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Praise the name of the Lord. When you look at... Um, when you look at uh, at John uh, at John six and from verse number forty nine, John six and from verse number forty nine, the Bible says, "Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. Your fathers ate this manna and they are dead." Praise the name of the Lord. So this manna, this is to tell us that they ate this manna and they died. And why did they die? I will answer after this break. Let's go for a break and I believe you're going to be blessed. Amen. Yes, I was saying from the book of uh, John 6 and from verse 49 and we have just, um, we were looking at uh, what Jesus was saying to the Jews, to the Pharisees. You know, Jesus was preaching to them and uh, these people had a lot of questions. Uh, why are you preaching like this? Uh, if you say that you are the bread of life, uh, what about in the old covenant? These people had a lot of questions. But in the, in the book of John 6, 49, it says, Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. Why are they dead? Because they ate the manna that could not give them life. They ate the manna that could not give them life. Yes, it will sustain them, but it could not give them life. And what is life? What, what, what is the bread of life? What is the life that we are talking about? The life of Jesus Christ, the life of God, the life that is in Christ Jesus, the life that you receive Christ and you walk in the reality of the gospel of Christ. You know, they ate manna and they died. You know, when, you, when your life is based on things, let me tell you something. When things end, then you will end. But if your life is based on the word of God, the word of God will always speak. No wonder when I say that Joshua was told, you shall speak this word day and night. It means that you shall live by this word. You shall live by this word. And Jesus told the devil that you shall not live by bread. You shall live by every word that comes that comes from the mouth of God. Why? Because this is the life of God. This is the life of God. And Jesus has come to explain to us now the life of God and and that which will make us to live forever. And he said, you ate this and you died. Praise the Lord. Now, look at this. When John, uh, when uh, Adam uh, Adam was told, if you eat of the fruit of, uh, of knowledge of good and evil, you shall really die. It's true. He died, but not physically. He died. And this was separation. He was separated from God. You know, when you are separated from God, you don't have the life of God. And Jesus came to bring us the life of God. In fact, the Bible says in the book of John 10 and from verse number 10, the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. But I, have, I am come that you may have life, and not only life, but life in abundance. So Jesus has come that we may have life and have it in abundance. What is life in abundance? This is the life of God in the inside of us. What is life in abundance? This is enjoying the goodness of the Lord. This is enjoying the grace of God that brings salvation and has appeared to all men. Praise the Lord. This is the gospel that has appeared to all men. And this gospel helps us now to live the God kind of life. No wonder when people are dying of sickness, a child of God does not die of sickness. When people are facing issues in this life, we cannot, we, yes, we are facing these issues. But look at this our eyes are focused on Christ Jesus and this is the life that God is talking about while your eyes are not looking at the things that are happening in this life your life you, you, your heart is not in the things that are happening you know it is only in the world whereby people are happy you know, they are happy. And why happy? Because of the happenings, the things that are happening. Oh, I did this. Ooh, hey, I got a job. Oh, I have a, this and this and this. This is a happening. This is what has happened to me. And that gives them happiness. But at the same time, when bad things come to them, they are always sorrow. They, there is always sorrow. There is always sad. They are in a sad moments. Why? Because it is about the happenings. But to the children of God, we are not happy. We are joyful. Why? 
Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this is not something that comes and goes. This is the life that we receive in Christ Jesus. John 3, 16, it says, For, so, so, uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever now believes in the son has eternal life. And this is the eternal life that we are talking about. Praise the name of the Lord. And Jesus now, he is explaining to them now the life that is happening here. You know, come to this reality. Come to this reality. The reality is me. And if you have me, you have life. If you have me, you have life. If you have me, you have everything. If you have me, now you can enjoy. Why? Because you have me in me. You, you have me. The Bible says in the book of 1 John 4, and uh, 4, 4, uh, the Bible says that as he is, so are we in this world. The life that now we are talking about here, this is the life of God. This is the life that is full of God. And God is living now in the inside of a believer and that brings the difference praise the Lord so what that brings the difference is that the, these people they ate manna and they died but they didn't have God in them they didn't have Christ in them but to us we cannot just die like mere men why because we have the God kind of life in the inside of us Paul is saying that it is no longer I that live it but Christ lives in me because if it was me I was soul I was a murderer I was abused I was um I was fighting the believers. But now I am Paul. The life of God lives in the inside of me. I am an apostle of Christ. I preach the good news. I preach the word of his grace. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Jesus came to explain to them that your fathers ate and they died. And look uh, from verse... Uh, uh, from, verse, uh, uh, from verse number 49 again. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. So when you, you when your focus is on the other things, when your focus is on the other things, you will surely die. Why? Because there is nothing you have in the inside of you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Look at uh, Luke 24 and from verse number 30. This is another scenario that I really love explaining because it will explain to you the bread of life. Luke 24 from verse 30 and 31. And now it came as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to to them, verse number 13, then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. Now, there were two, these, the two people who are going to a mouse. And these two people were giving stories of what was happening that weekend. You know, they, they were like, ah, that guy died. That that guy said that it, he was a martyr. Ah, that guy, this is what happened to this guy. And, you know, Jesus met them and they started explaining. And Jesus was like, so what is happening here? And these people were like, are you a visitor? Are you a visitor in this town? Don't you know that there are things that were happening here? Like what? There was this Amataya. He did good things. He healed the people. You know, he raised the dead. He gave us food the other day. You know, he did all these good things. But now he is dead. We thought that he was the Messiah. But now it seems like we need to, to wait for another Messiah. And Jesus was listening to them. They were preaching to Jesus about Jesus. They were preaching to Jesus about Jesus. Now look at this. While you don't have the bread of life in the inside of you, you won't know the difference. You won't know the difference. And once you don't know the difference, you will just be a mere man. You will just be a mere man. And these people were talking to Jesus about Jesus. They were preaching to Jesus about Jesus. Meaning that you can know God, but knowing God does not know, mean you know Jesus. There are people, even preachers we have today, who preach God, but they don't have the revelation of Christ. They don't have the revelation of the finished work of Christ. And God wants them now to come to this revelation that it is not about the bread uh, 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 that you eat every day, but the life that now you receive every day. By the way, this is to tell you, in the old covenant, the reason as to why now, I can explain to you, the reason as to why this bread was given early in the morning, it's because God wanted them to see Jesus every morning. He wanted them to have the revelation of Christ every morning. He wanted them to have the testimony of Christ every morning. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, when you wake up to this reality, the next thing is that you will see Jesus. The next thing is that you will testify 
fire of Jesus and you will say I've tested of the Lord and I know you, he is good and when even circumstances of this life come you can be able to look at them and tell the and tell that situation what you know the Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony what is the testimony Christ died Christ was buried Christ resurrected and because of the life of God that is inside me this situation has to shut Jesus said when he was in this world anything that is not planted by my God let it be rooted out why because I have the authority of God I have the life of God I have what it takes for me to speak things the Bible says and you shall decrease something and it shall happen and how can it happen when you know the truth because the Bible says and you shall know the truth and this truth shall set you free praise the name of the Lord and the Bible says they were preaching to Jesus about Jesus and the Bible says when they reached somewhere Jesus made them sit down and he took the bread and he broke it look at this Jesus broke the bread and gave to each one of them and said take this is my bread you shall remember me take this because this is my testimony this is my testimony and the bible says when they ate of the bread their eyes were enlightened their eyes were open what happens when your eyes are open when your eyes are open now you will see the truth when your eyes are open now you can able to see god as he is why because the veil that was hindering them had to be removed and how is the veil removed once you understand the gospel of Jesus Christ? And the Bible says their eyes were open and they understand, oh, now I know you are Jesus the Messiah. You are Jesus who died, who was buried, and now you are resurrected. And now because of that, Paul says that now because of this reality, now I realize that I died with Christ. I was buried with Christ and I resurrected with Christ. And now the life that I now live, I live the, 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 I live the life that is of Christ Jesus. Meaning the life that now we live after now our eyes are enlightened is the life of God in the inside of us. The life that now we are living is the light that is shy, that shine in darkness. In fact, the Bible says in the book of uh, John 1, and this life shine in darkness, and darkness, uh, 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 this life was the light of men. So the life of God brings light. Wow, praise the Lord. It, it, this means that they were, their eyes were darkened, but once they got the revelation of Christ, the life of God now brought light, and this light now shined in darkness. Look at this. While your eyes are enlightened, once you realize that Jesus is the bread of life, now your eyes are enlightened and now you can be able to see Jesus and you can be able to relate to him as a father and not a servant. You can be able to relate to him as a father and you can now go boldly into the throne of grace and you can obtain mercy and find and, 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 and find peace. You can go and find mercy even in times of need. Why? Because now you are eyes are enlightened and now you can see when Elijah and uh, when Elisha and uh, uh, and and, and his guy, uh, the Bible says, this guy had that there were people who were coming, you know, the, the guys were coming and they were coming to kill them. Uh, these were the enemies. And the Bible says, and this guy cried to Elisha and said, oh my Lord, these people are coming to kill us. But look at this, Elisha was not afraid. Why? Because there is something that Elisha knew, that you need your eyes to be enlightened. And the Bible says, and God, and, and Elisha prayed to God, oh God, open his eyes that he may see that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. He that is in us is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. And the Bible says that his eyes was enlightened and now he was not afraid. Why? Because he knew that he that God was in his side and if God is on our side who can be against us? And so their eyes were enlightened and now they could go outside there and they could preach Jesus Jesus, not as the bread that you ate yesterday, but the God who is giving life, the, the God who gives life, and he gives life to anyone who believes in in him praise the lord and now jesus now is starting to explain uh, to explain this and he's telling them now look at this i was that bread of life <laughs> 
So this is to tell us, in the old covenant, God gave these people Jesus. God gave these people Jesus. And I will explain to you, and I will explain to you because, uh, through the word of God, because the word of God explains itself. Now, look at John 6 and from verse number 51. John 6 and from verse number 51. I am the living bread. Ha! This is the good news. I am the living bread. That which you saw from the old covenant, I was the one. <laughs> that which you saw from the old covenant, I was the one. I was the living bread that you people ate every day. Praise the Lord. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. Look at this. In the old covenant, we saw uh, that Moses told them this was the bread that came from heaven. David came and explained to us this was the bread of life that was given by the angels. And now Jesus now is coming to tell us the bread that you're talking about. I am that bread and I have come from heaven. Praise the Lord. He came from heaven. If anyone eats of his bread... Wow, no wonder they, this bread was to, uh, for eating. Why? Because this was a picture of the good things that to, uh, was to come. And Jesus now is saying, whoever now eats of my bread, what will happen to him? He will live forever. Now, I want to explain to you something. Do you remember when I said that your fathers ate the bread and they died? Now, once you eat of this bread, you cannot die. Why? Because Jesus is the bread of life. He gives bread. He himself is the bread. The Bible says that I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. No one will come through, will go to God without passing through me. Why? Because I am the ticket to the Father. I am the ticket to the Father. And the Bible says he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh. Why my flesh? Why my flesh? How can you eat your flesh? This was, a, uh, this was a revelation that was to come. This was the bread that Jesus broke to the, to the two guys and they gave to them. This was his flesh. And why his flesh? Why? Because the Bible says that he was made to be seen. He who knew not sin. That I that was made to be seen, I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And because of that, now I have the righteousness of God. The God kind of righteousness and this is the gift of God the Bible says that once you eat of me you will live forevermore so if these people got the revelation they could not die but they could live forevermore why because they will have my life you can never have the life of God and still die you can never have the life of God and still perish you can never have the life of God and still be in want why because God has become everything that you may need in this life and this is the good news my brothers praise the lord and the bible says which i shall give you for the life of the word so jesus has come and he has brought to us the life now when we speak about the bread of life now we are able to know that the bread of life is jesus christ and jesus has come and because jesus has come now we have this internal life now that jesus has come now we can see things differently now that jesus has come now we can see our tomorrow now now we can speak of things boldly. Why? Because we have that which these people looked for. You know, Moses was like, this is the, uh, this is the bread of life. This is the bread. Uh, this is the manna. But I believe Moses was like, I know there is something. I know there is something. And this is the bread of life. And whosoever eat of this shall never die. Look at this child of God. You may be there and you are sick. God has come and he is telling you, I am the bread of life. You you can never die of sickness. Why? Because I have come and by my stripes you are healed. And now to these other sides when you come to Jesus, it is not only about that by my stripes I'm healed. Jesus now is not sick. And because Jesus is not sick, Jelabada, I cannot be sick. And because Jesus can never lack, I can never lack. Because as he is, so am I in this life. Why? I have the God kind of life. I live the victorious life. A believer has been called to a life of victory. A believer has been called to triumph. A believer has been called 
to the light. A believer has been called to enjoy everything that God has given freely. Praise the name of the Lord. A believer has been called to see the goodness of the Lord and walk in the goodness of the Lord. No wonder we are not discouraged by the things that are happening. No wonder we are not discouraged by the issues that we are facing every day because there is something that we know that we belong to Jesus. And if any man now be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things, the old things have, have passed away. And behold, all things now are new. What is new? The God kind of life, the bread of life that now we have received. And because we have received this, we can live forever. Because we have received this, we can face our tomorrow. Because we, uh, we have uh, believed this, uh, then there is nothing that can bring us down. When they speak of going down, we can speak of going up. Why? Because the, 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 the steps of the righteous, they are ordered of the Lord. And the life of a believer shines brighter and brighter and brighter as we wake up now to the reality of the gospel. We wake up to the reality of knowing that Jesus has already given us everything. We wake up to the reality of uh, I don't need this because I have him and because I have him I have life and not only life I have uh, the abundance of life. Look at that situation and speak to that situation and say because of the bread of life that I've received in Christ Jesus Jesus, I cannot face this. A great I see that is in me, that he that is in the world. I overcome him. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Speak the word of God in that situation. Speak the word of God in that issue. Speak the word of God in everything that you are going through. Why? Because you already have everything that we you have. The Bible says we believe and therefore we speak. What do you speak? You cannot speak what you have not believed. You cannot speak what you have not believed. Therefore, we speak because we believe. And because we believe, now we can be able to speak boldly. Why? Because whatsoever we say, it shall be established. And we speak with boldness, knowing that we have everything that we need. I want to talk to you who is there and you, you, you are wondering, how can my life be good? How can I look, look things, uh, how, how can I be great in, the, in this nation? How can I make my the, everything about me go well? You have to believe in Christ Jesus. And once you believe in Christ Jesus, you have believed the bread of of life. I wanted to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the word of his grace that is able to build us up and give us an inheritance. I'm praying for my viewer in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, they, the Lord, have not received you. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. I'm praying for them, everlasting God, that Lord, their eyes will be enlightened. And once their eyes, they are enlightened, they will see you differently. Thank you, Lord, for such a broadcast. Thank you, Lord, even because of beholding Christ show. I believe, Lord, that their life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I th just want to thank you so much for following to these uh, teachings. I believe you have been blessed. Jesus is the bread of life. Once you have the bread of life, you have everything that you need. My name is Apostle Jere, and this is the Beholding Christ at Wema TV. God bless you.